Hello friends, Tanya here for Trinity Stamps and today we're going to play with the stained glass lily stamp set and we're going to use it three ways. Here is that stamp set with the coordinating dies. There are two sentiments and a beautiful stained glass main image with three lilies growing on a stem. I'm going to stamp this on white cardstock with juicy embossing ink. And then I'm going to pull out my gold embossing powder. And we'll get that all covered with this embossing powder. And then we're going to heat set this. This is just one of the ways that I'm going to make uh, make this image. This is on an A2 sized card panel. So that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And it is, um, I think this is hammer mill. 80 pound. It's an 80 pound white cardstock, a nice smooth cardstock. And you can see this image come to life with the heat from the embossing gun and the gold embossing powder melting and creating a raised shiny image. Very pretty. That would be pretty all by itself. And I have done the embossing on vellum, a black cardstock, watercolor cardstock and the plain cardstock. Now we're going to take the black cardstock and the Distress watercolor pencils. And I start out laying the pencil right down onto the cardstock um, and I'm going to make these white lilies. And then I tried to activate that watercolor pencil on the paper with just a wet brush. Now that did not seem to have an opaque enough color it was too translucent. You could, the black cardstock showed too well. So I'm just using a damp watercolor brush to pick color up off of the um, color pencil and applying it this way. And I'm going to paint this entire panel in this manner. It's going to have a subdued but really pretty effect. And you can see some of the other colors that I chose. I believe this is Twisted Citron. And I get that well um, loaded onto my paintbrush. And I'm going to color all of the stems and the unopened lily buds. Then I'm going to pull out the yellow and I'm going to start going around this frame. And I start out with the yellow all the way around. I can't remember, did I add the orange? Well, we'll find out in a little bit, won't we? You don't have to color every section the same color on this frame and you'll see in another version that I don't use the same color in every square around that frame. Now we're going to use I believe this is salvage patina to color in some of these sections that are in the background around the lily. I plan to use two different colors to fill in these sections and um, I really like how it turned out. You'll have to check it out. Now we're going to use some Salty Ocean and now I do add the orange. It was just a little too bright. This is going to be on a sympathy card. That's the whole uh, image colored. I ran a dry cloth over that to make sure that it um, didn't have any watercolor pencil residue over the embossing to keep that all nice and sharp. Now we're going to take the with, sentime, sy with sympathy sentiment and we're going to emboss that also with the same gold cards uh, embossing powder on the same piece of cardstock. We are going to die cut both of these pieces so it doesn't matter that they're both on the same piece in an odd orientation. I've got those taped down and I die cut both of them. I'm kind of dry fitting where I might want to put the sentiment but before that I am going to add a three layers of cardstock behind this sentiment to add a little extra height. Maybe I'm only using two. There might be an, an a spare <laughs> when we're done here. Just going to layer those and get it all nicely layered up. Next I cut out some leaves from the Wildflower Clippings die set. That is a oldie but a goodie. It creates lots of die cut, different things that you can combine together, foliage and flowers. We're also using the 5x7 or A7 eyelet 
dye. It creates this beautiful background, and I die cut it with one of the modern embossed A7 stacks. I believe this turned out to be four and a half by six and a half. It might actually even be four and a quarter by six and a quarter to create a nice panel. Now I did back this with the same size uh, and same color. So it's white on white, but that added texture in that background is just gorgeous. We'll adhere that to our five by seven card base, and then we'll take our center element, add some scrap cardstock behind it, and add some glue to all of these different components. I am using the press and seal here to hold it all together. Hopefully, I'll be able to lay this all down and have it all stick in one fell swoop. However, my plan did not quite go as intended uh, for a couple of reasons. I didn't have one of those pieces of greenery um, covered with enough glue so that one fell and the rest of my greenery was hanging off the edges of the card so I'm just fussing with them a little bit to get them where I need them to be and the nature of these greens is that you can bend the stem and change the direction they curve very easily I do love that about these if you haven't explored that wild fly, wild flower clippings die set you should check it out it's a good one Next, I'm going to adhere the uh, With Sympathy sentiment across the middle of the oval. Finally, for this card, we're going to stamp the main image on the inside of the card using Pumice Stone Distress Oxide ink. And that finishes up card number one. Card number two, we're going to take the first panel that I had stamped. No, this is not the first one. This is the one that I did not emboss. So I did color the image with Copic markers. I happen to use Copics. You could use any alcohol markers. And I came back and stamped over the top with some Versifying Claire Nocturne ink. I had stamped the original image with um, Hero Arts Intense Black ink, which is an alcohol, friend, alcohol marker friendly ink. Versifying Claire is not alcohol marker friendly, but it does create a very crisp um, image. So we're going to add some clear embossing powder to this and heat set that just to add some extra wow factor to this image. Again, I do love heat embossing. It is one of the most effective ways to heighten the elegance of your card every single time. It's so versatile. It's very inexpensive. You can buy some embossing powder and a heat gun and have some embossing ink and those supplies will last you for years. The um, heat tool will last you forever. I've had mine since probably 2002. I've had that heat tool for a long time. Next, I'm adding a little shimmer to the lilies here with my Spectrum Noir sparkle pen. You can use whatever sparkle medium you have. Wink of Stella liquid pixie dust if you're careful with some diluted. Otherwise, it will take over. I do love the liquid pixie dust, but it is intense sparkle. Now we're going to use the coordinating oval die to die cut this beautiful image out. And we're going to pull out this die I think I don't know what it's called exactly but I'm guessing it's palm leaves it that's what it reminds me of and Palm Sunday is very close to Easter I do love the way that that coordinates with the lilies here which are they they speak Easter and sympathy to me both of those sentiments I don't know why and one of my daughter-in-laws absolutely adores lilies in fact they have a bunch of Asiatic lilies around their home in all kinds of colors they're absolutely gorgeous I decided to do some cracked pistachio ink blending and then some ink smooshing I've been very much on an ink blending and ink smooshing run lately I do love it but I kind of go in stages sometimes I think I've done the same thing too many times so then I have to break that cycle and try another technique but I wanted that subtle contrast between this beautiful slimline cover plate die cut that I did in a green cardstock 
And then I'm going to glue this directly onto this piece of cardstock. It happens to be a three and a half by eight and a half inch panel because that's the size of our cover plate. I maybe should have gone just a smidge smaller. We do have some fairly wide borders on this, so I could have gotten away with a slightly smaller panel, so I wouldn't have to do this. I'm trimming off the little bit of light green that's sticking out beyond our cover plate die. Now that I have that all tidied up, we're going to bring in our slimline card base. This is just a three and a half by eight and a half inch card base. It started out as seven by eight and a half inches, scored at three and a half to create the card base. And I did use some heavyweight cardstock. I believe it is 110 pound accent opaque cardstock. And then for our sentiment, we're going to use an Easter Blessings. This is from the same stamp set from the stained glass lilies. And we're going to heat emboss that with gold embossing powder. I do love that um, embossing powder. It's a beautiful gold and I still have gobs of it. And I've had it for several years <laughs> and I'm just going to keep using it. We're going to pull out the coordinating die and die cut this. I did stamp that on a heavyweight cardstock. Sometimes it's nice to have that extra heft. Sometimes it embosses better. Um, I haven't had any problems with this sentiment having troubles uh, heat embossing. Now we're going to adhere this center panel or this image with a little bit of extra cardstock on the back for a little height, a little extra definition. And we'll adhere the sentiment a little bit below that. With the slimline height, you have some extra space to spread your elements out if you'd like. And then I decided it was just a little too blah. It needed to have a little more pizzazz. So I pulled out that Spectrum Noir sparkle pen again. And I cover the entire cover plate with the sparkle. Turns out really pretty. It does have lots of shimmer when you shift it in the light. And one more element of sparkle, we're gonna use the Buttercup Vase Rhinestones. These are really pale yellow, very nice. Goes well um, with the color of the background behind those lilies, which is a very light, um, like lemon chiffon is what I, is the color name that I would give that. And then inside the card, we're going to stamp with the cracked pistachio part of the uh, lily image. I think that really makes a nice way to finish the inside of the card. Pop that in an envelope and you have instant uh, Easter fun. Here is the vellum version. And I have this flipped over face down on the table, on the desk. And I'm coloring from the back. You don't have to be quite as careful and you can use some very intense colors because the vellum will mute this a bit. You can't use really light colors because they don't show through as well. So that's why I switched from that yellow to this uh, red orange color, which will show through nicely through the vellum. And again, you just... Um, don't have to worry as much about the border lines. I do come in and use that uh, a goldish yellow. It's a yellow red. Um, this is one of the Copic markers that I use for gold tones quite a lot. I think it's YR23 or YR24. It's a rich color. And I'm coloring all of those lilies with this. Then I took a light blue and colored all of the background. Now, in retrospect, I wouldn't have had to do that because it doesn't show very strongly on the finished card, but you can see that subtle blue background on the finished card. Next, I took um, a couple of panels that are eight and a half by five and a half and cut the oval roughly out of the center. And I'm going to sandwich this vellum between them. I had changed my, this isn't, going to finish the way I envisioned it, but it's a great way to add adhesive to your vellum and hide the adhesive. So now that I have it centered in the first oval panel, I am going to flip it over and place the uh, second oval on it. There we've got kind of a window and I 
ideally should have, well, not should have, I was going to use this as a peek through kind of element, but then decided to add it as a layer on the front of our card. Next, I have the Terrific Terrazzo layering stencil system uh, or set. And I'm inking it first with squeezed lemonade distress oxide and then with, I think it's, is it wild honey? It might, no, it's um, mustard seed uh, for the second layer. And there are three layers here. We're going to add some shimmer and shine with our third layer and look how rich that mustard seed is. I think I would have been a little happier if I'd used mustard seed and wild honey, but this, it still looks good still looks good we're going to pull out the lunar paste in moonlight this has some beautiful shimmer no not lunar paste it's luna paste and it's got a very buttery light texture to it we'll add that all over our stencil and as you saw i used one of the ovals that i die cut out of this earlier as a mask for our stained glass element worked perfectly we're also going to use the big Easter cut and foil set here. I cut the word Easter in the fine detail out of some gold cardstock and I'm adhering it to some orange cardstock for the shadow layer. This goes together very easily and this word is in two pieces. The letter E is separate from the rest of the word. We'll add a little adhesion, adhesive behind the E and let that um, adhesive stick well. Here is the same um, sentiment foiled. Next, we're going to take the Simply Sentimental Happy and we're going to stamp just the sub sentiment version of Happy in Versifying Claire Nocturne ink on some white cardstock. And we are going to use my clear embossing powder to add a little extra uh, pizzazz to this. And you know, if I planned all of these out before I created them, I could probably save a ton of time with all of the embossing that I do. So I could do it all in one big batch. However, that's just not how I create. I create as I go and everything develops as we go. I'm going to use another of the Modern Embossed A7 stack to die cut this. And it went through all of those layers beautifully. I did use 80 pound cardstock for all of the layers. There were two layers in it, uh, sandwiching that vellum piece. This is a piece of shimmery white cardstock that I used um, a slightly larger of the A7 stack dies to cut. We'll lay that on top and it's nicely matted. And as you put it, the vellum piece over the white cardstock, the stained glass coloring really shows through. We'll add the word Easter at the bottom here. I don't want to cover any more of this than I can help. So I'm carefully placing this just overlapping the very bottom of our beautiful stained glass, stain, stained glass lily <laughs> image. Oh my goodness, I speak so well. <laughs> um, I'm going to add our little happy that I used a die to die cut from the happy Simply Sentimental Happy die set. And because I need to bring the in the design to the inside of the card, I took one of the Terrific Terrazzo layers and both of the yellows that I used and I did some fairly light ink blending on the inside just to add a little extra detail there. You can certainly easily write over the top of that. That's all three cards I have for you. I just really didn't think I was going to use this stamp set as much as I did. I really had a lot of fun playing with all of the different ways you can use it. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please take a moment to do that now. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Check that description box below for the list of all of the products that I used today. And until next time, here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Bye-bye.